Leaked emails? One, two, three, four! Sound right? Really bad idea for some. All right. That's my level of commitment to that. All right, Orlando, we get it. Sandwich night, man. Chill the fuck out. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Chris Gethard Show. I'm your host, Chris Gethard. We want to say hi to everybody watching live on MNN, as well as everybody watching at thechrisgethardshow.com right now, and anybody who might be downloading the show in the future. Very happy to have you here tonight. Uh, truths are getting told. Uh, secrets are being revealed. We are legion and whatnot tonight. We'll get into that more later. I want to introduce all the people who are sitting up here. First, I should address the elephant in the room, which is that we got an email. We'll talk about this more throughout the show. We got an email earlier today saying that the majority of the lights in the studio were broken, so we only have a handful of lights. We dedicated them towards our musical guests, and the rest of our show will be lit by our audience with flashlights. Personally, I think it's because the world doesn't want us revealing the truth tonight. That being said... Lights. He got no lights. <laughs> Leaving us here in the dark. It's gonna be a long night. Lights. All right. <laughs> the LLC, the greatest house made in public access. Also, I want to say hello, unironically, to my friend, the man behind the plant, and say happy birthday. <laughs> the man behind the plant. The man behind the plant. Mimi on the hoops is here as always. Hello, Mimi. How's it going? Are we doing it? Are we doing it or no? Oh, yeah, we can do it. Mimi's theme song's really, really good. Yeah. Well, you can't stop me uh, from singing, and you can't stop me uh, from singing, and you can't stop a coaster from loop de looping. We have Messenger Bag, our newest random, and who's like the fucking belle of the ball online. All the kids love Messenger Bag. <laughs> yeah, Messenger Bag. Have you monitored the internet reaction to you, which is profoundly positive? Um, yeah. There was one really weird one where a dude on Tumblr wants me to rep the bay a little harder okay. and start going, start going hyphy and shit. Wait, what is <laughs> I'm from the Bay, and I don't entirely the know. Bay the Bay Area. The Bay Area. Now, it does seem, though, like he said to do it, and you've immediately done it. You immediately did manage to say the word hyphy on the show. He wanted me to go hyphy. Yeah, I think to go hyphy. Who are you? We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Bethany Hall, how are you? Bethany Hall, how's it going? It's going pretty good. How are you? That I'm, light is I'm great. good. Sorry, but I need to light you. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. You told me that you hated the mask I was wearing. You must I'm be glad I already so bailed on it. I'm so glad you took it off already. <laughs> All right. And how do you feel about this series of intimidating lights in I, the darkness coming I at us? I sort of feel like it's a 4th of July bonfire. Very <laughs> nice. The human fish has no show. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead. Murph, the reservoir dog, you're a man who likes truths being exposed. You're a man who thwarts Gimgul. Tonight is all about expo exposing the own truths of our show. How you feeling? I feel great. I love the intimacy of, of the lights dimmed like this, or just yeah. out completely, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah, and I'm, I have no idea what some of these truths are going to be. Though. Okay. So, yeah. Shannon O'Neill, how you feeling today? I feel like our Al-Qaeda cell has been discovered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It does have a zero dark 30 vibe. It does, it does feel like, this does feel like the last thing you ever see, right? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Fascinating. And sitting next to me, Messenger Bag wants to know who he is, but fans of our show, I think many of them already know who he is. 
he is the host of of what I would say is one of the other one of the other great shows of MNN. Probably one of the three. One great of the three shows or four on great MNN. The, the host of Mid Evenings, the show that follows ours. Are you guys following us? You got an episode tonight? Yeah, we're on right after this. All right, Jay Miller, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I do. I've known Jay a long time now, and uh, if you're not watching Mid Evenings, I would say that oftentimes, if you're a fan of this show and you don't leave the um, you leave your uh, leave your TV on, leave your stream on, you're missing a far funnier show that Jay Miller it's str makes. It's, it's weirder. Your show is weirder? Yeah, yeah. I thought we had weirder in the bag. No. <laughs> no. You, yeah, your show often does have, like, you'll just book an insane person as a guest just because they're insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then spend 60 minutes with that insane person. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we do, like, stunts and stuff, but you'll be like, a crazy person on the street talked to me today, and now they're on my show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we brought you on, and you wrestled a guy dressed as Winnie the Pooh. I did, and I won. I tapped and he won. him out. And I tapped won. him out. If, I felt really good about that. Thank you for letting me do it. No. Winnie the Pooh is sitting over there. All right, so let's talk about tonight. So, Jay, how much planning goes into mid-evenings? Because when I did your show, it was a well-executed actual talk show. You had musical cues, and you had a guy warming up the crowd. Yeah, yeah. You gave the crowd instructions. People knew where they were supposed to be and when. Yeah, it seems that way. It seems like we're well prepared, but it's it's a, it's it's a bit of a train wreck. Yeah, yeah. Like we we put it all like a day before we put it all together. But yeah. you, I just asked you like 15 minutes ago, what do we have planned? And you were like, I don't know, man. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But you also committed to wearing the mask for 60 minutes, and 30 seconds later, you took it off. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Where is I the did. commitment? Well I, saw, well, I realized immediately that no one would be able to hear me, and it would be very annoying. Oh, that's true. So here's what we're doing tonight, everyone, because here's the thing. I don't think even the people up here know how much uh, planning goes into the show. Most of us show up and have no idea what's going to happen, right, Messenger Bag? We're not filling in messenger bag on what the show is. <laughs> the show used to be, when it started at UCB, we were a very small operation. I'd just think of a show, and then Bethany and I would sit down, and we'd be like, let's do that. And then we'd figure out how to do it. But now there's all these different parts, all these different moving parts, and none of the, I feel like I'm the only person who reads all the emails, all the input. So I also want to say this. It's July 3rd. Tomorrow is America's birthday, and there's some scary stuff going on with transparency. Edward Snowden's living in a fucking Russian airport because the government's after him for transparency and telling truths about how things operate. And I'm against that. I, I, I think that guy is a, it did a good thing. But I realized... Uh, well, is, that, and that's, that's, that's the extent to which our show will ever go political, <laughs> is using it as the setup for a bit. But I realized, I don't, I don't know, I'm here getting all worked up, and I don't know that I'm the most transparent. I don't know that I've ever shared... Um everything that's going on to this show. So I printed out everything from the past week, every text I got about the show, every wow. Tumblr about the show, every personal Facebook message, every email I got, everything that came into our Facebook group. And I put it all here. And tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go Edward Snowden. I'm going Julian Assange. Yeah. We're leaking the TCGS emails tonight. Yeah. We're leaking the TCGS emails. Gave him lying to you. Gave him keeping it hidden. No. They've been hiding the truth from you like you're some kind of kid. No more lies. 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 All right, so if you're out there and you're watching our show, you want to know anything about how it works, any part of the machinery, man. We're not the type of organization that, that's hiding truth. We're not spying on you. We're not going to send drones to kill you. We want you to trust us and know us and feel like you have access to all the information you want. So anything you want to know, call us up and let us know. And just so you guys know, once I thought of this, I did ask our writers. We have uh, four people who mainly write the show, Duke Ponzetti, Drew Johnston, J.D. Amato, and Emma Noble. I asked them to not read what I put on the website. I said on our show's website I was going to do this. I asked them to just keep brainstorming. So you will have an unadulterated look at the types of ideas that get pitched throughout the week for the Chris Gethard Show. I was thinking we'll just start with the text messages. I got three text messages mm -hmm. since um, Saturday about the show. One was from Shannon. It was very nice. Kind of sad, isn't it? What? <laughs> just three text messages since about the Saturday. show? <laughs> yeah, but I mean a thousand emails. Shannon said, Geth the oh, after our Delcos Marathon show, thanks to everybody who came yeah. to that and helped out with that. <laughs> Gethard Show last night was so awesome. I had so much fun, but more importantly, the audience loved it. Do it again at night. <laughs> in a forest. Yeah. I like that. That made me happy. That was a good yeah. text to get. Yeah. Here's the text. 
here's the text I got from Melissa after the Del Close Marathon show on Saturday. And total transparency right there. I bet a lot of people don't know that I have a text relationship with a 17-year-old girl. No, I think they know. <laughs> I think they know. Everybody, I think everybody knows. Um, she said, in an effort to overcome my inability to be sincere, I'd like to thank you for last night and for TCGS in general. I had slash have a lot of fun, but I probably don't seem like it. Ugh, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Thanks. How's everybody feel about that? Alyssa is reaching out to me. Is that appropriate, inappropriate? It's fine. It's all right. Okay. 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 I mean, as long as they're all sticking to what this, like, similar to this text. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And okay. then James from San Francisco, we did the touring show in San Francisco. After I announced this show, James said, Chris, you'd better have an escape plan ready for when you dump all the secrets for the world to see. Can always hide out with Allison and I in Oakland. Fuck, I've already said too much. <laughs> so that was good. That was good. Thank you, James, for reaching out. But I'm going to ask everybody if we can flip. Let's see. Uh, five. Uh, no, six pages, seven pages in. Let's go to the one marked planning emails for the episode. That's what we should get into to start. Jersey Dave is here coming to the rescue. Woo! Jersey Dave. Yeah. We're going to expose the real truth about yeah, Jersey Dave Jersey tonight. Dave. Who's the problem solver, Jersey Dave? Are you broke? He can fix you. Got it. He's got it. Jersey Dave, Bethany had a question. Do you have another mic for us? This guy's mic's breaking. I don't know. This guy. We got no mics, no lights. You're shutting us down already. We can share the handheld. We can move this around. So, yeah, maybe we should just all take turns reading these. I sent out an email, I believe, on Sunday that said, what should we do for the show next week? That was the subject. And now we're gonna read and expose to the world, <laughs> leak all the emails that our writers wrote back in response. So I don't know, uh, Murph, maybe you should read the Duke Ponzetti ones? Sure. So he starts it off. Connor wants to do vid this week. It's four minutes long. It's kicking off an interactive thing he's doing with his bit. So just wanna give him a thumbs up or down. That being said, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> okay, Shannon, do you want to read J.D. Amato's next contribution? Yeah. Sleep. Let's just sleep on camera. <laughs> <laughs> we just had two festivals in one week and regular shows during that week, and we're tired. Let's just sleep. We, we built a TCGS theme park and tore it down in two hours. We need sleep. <laughs> okay, now, Jay Miller... Jay Miller, host of Mid Evenings. Drew Johnston, I want to say this. I think Drew Johnston is one of the funniest people in the entire world. But when you people see the things he contributes to our writers' discussions, you're going to be flabbergasted. <laughs> Drew Johnston, let's hear his first contribution, Jay Miller. We should try to make a firework. Drew. <laughs> Try to make a firework. <laughs> that and, and you won't keep going. We'll keep going. You're not gonna think he's joking. All right, Bethany, do you want to take that mic and read Emma Noble's first contribution? These are the writers that I trust to build this thing, and this is how it works. All you people out there. Let's do a summer camp show, and everyone will wear pajamas and be lit by lanterns and flashlights and tell spooky stories. And I want to say, thus far, this is all, thus far pretty close to what we're doing. And thus far, a pretty good idea. But this is where Emma's weird brain takes over. And maybe the campers from across the lake can come and prank them. <laughs> My brain is in a weird place. Okay, messenger bag, would you like to read the next Duke Ponzetti? He's Mark Noah Foreman because he commits to his bit, and his email is actually a Noah Foreman-based email. That's his character he plays on the show. Who can tell the spookiest story? I like that. Also, let's make a fucking bomb. <laughs> let's make a fucking bomb. And we'll get to the end of this page, and then we'll take a call. So, look, uh, Murph, it looks like you're up next on our next, on our next Drew Johnston. <laughs> Drew, you're going to have to come up here and explain yourself before this episode's over. Okay. <laughs> What if we say we aren't doing anything for the fourth and then tell audience members to pitch is their plans and then we crash the parties? <laughs> Drew just wants Drew. to go to a party. <laughs> All right, Shannon. Drew followed up immediately with another one. Or what if we do something about the Texas filibuster? We all play very stereotypical Texans, and we start filibustering. Okay. Jay Miller with our next J.D. Amato. J.D. Amato, my right-hand man. This is his contribution to planning this show. 
Yeah, let's make a bomb on television. <laughs> what up, Prism employee? <laughs> Thanks for reading. What if we do a salute to America? Or one half is salute, one half is talking shit about America. <laughs> or what if we do a show called Close Up of Gethard, and no matter what goes on, and it's extreme close up of Gethard. <laughs> Or we could revise the Constitution. Or we could revise the Constitution. All right, let's take a phone call, then we'll do another page of these. It looks like we have Sarah on line one. Sarah, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hi, Chris. Good. How are you? I'm good. We're exposing all the machinery of how this show came to be and how, how we work. This is not far off from how we operate every week. Sarah, what do you want to talk about tonight? Well, I've never called in before. This is my first time. Oh, welcome. But thank you. Um, but since this episode is about revealing secrets, I wanted to expose someone on the air. Oh, you want to expose someone on the air? Someone involved in our show? Yes, but it's not evil. Um, I'm actually doing it because I think it might encourage them. So it's for good. Okay. So I can't use the thunder too. So I'm not part of the Rats Carlton, but a couple weeks ago I did hang out in the chat room during the show for okay. the first time. Uh -huh. And Andres from Massachusetts was there, as he usually is. And I noticed that his interactions with some of the girls there was okay. very charismatic and Ooh. he had a lot of flirtatious banter Ooh. going. Ooh, flirting with forth. the girls in the chat room. Not where I thought she was going to go. <laughs> no, I like that. So uh, you, you'll be happy to hear Andres is actually here tonight. Andres, would you like to come and answer for this? Yeah. Have the mic, please. All right, Andres. So Sarah, Sarah says, here, take the mic, face the camera, face your accuser, because in America you have a right to face your accuser, not have a robot in the sky kill you in the desert. Andres from Massachusetts. Sarah says you get awfully flirty in that chat room. How do you respond? Uh, yeah, those are like, I don't know, adult women, and I'm not flirting with them. Just like saying... Well Listen, here's the thing. It's just surprising because you are always saying how you suck at talking to girls. Mm -hmm. And well from documented. what I witnessed, I feel like you are talk good at talking to girls. So I suspect that you're either lying to us and you're great with women and you're just putting this on, or you just don't have enough confidence in yourself when it comes so, to talking to girls. Sarah has a question. Oh, oh, yeah. So Sarah wants to know, are you a secret player? I'm a teenage boy and you brought me on this show and you're just <laughs> laughing at me. I'm not laughing at you, man. I'm trying to help you. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Sarah's saying you got game. That means she was impressed personally. Oh. And you told us your New Year's resolution was to get better at flirting with girls. And she's telling you, yeah, you nailed it. What's up, Sarah? No. Yeah. <laughs> Andres from Massachusetts, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Well, that's right. not a strong start. <laughs> not, <laughs> not, yeah, I think he's better at typing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and girls, and it's great. It's I, I, all of my early flirtations <laughs> happen yeah. via typing yeah, in yeah. chat room boxes. Yeah, yeah. Just type, delete, type, delete, type, delete, and eventually send. All right, we'll get back to more of these writing emails in a second. Sarah, thank you for that call. Right now, we're going to welcome our friends, our guests. Uh, they are a band. Friends of the show, we're happy to have them, welcoming them to dance. Ladies and gentlemen, from Staten Island, what, what should I, Jay, you are uh, well acquainted with yeah. this band. What would you say? What would you say um, about our old friends, Les Vinyl? I would just say their names. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all you would do? That's all I got. Because they're all great. Right. They're great. They're from Staten Island. Yeah. Give it up for Les Vinyl. Les Vinyl, ladies and gentlemen. This time he thinks she's going overboard. This time I think he's going overboard. Too many stories that have started wars. This time I think he's going overboard. You start a million that you can't adore. This time I think he's going oh, overboard. Suddenly searching for another one. Another's one. Another's one. Another's one. And I don't know. I She's going over 
Wonderful. We will be back with more less vinyl later. More dancing, more fun. Let's continue with our emails. When last we saw the inner workings of our writer's mind and how this show came to be, we were debating whether or not we should build a bomb or revise the Constitution. <laughs> Let's go ahead, Bethany. You got your page out? Uh, yep. Why don't you go ahead and read the next one? We had it's Drew Johnston. I want to pitch, I'm too sexy for this shirt. <laughs> and we get one shitty shirt that everyone in the audience is definitely too sexy for. That's all I got. <laughs> all right, messenger bag. You want to read the next one? Like? I don't know. That one actually intrigues me. Let's go ahead and actually put a star next to I'm too sexy for this shirt. All right, JD, JD and model via messenger bag, the inner workings of our writing process revealed. We should summon Satan and curse our audience. <laughs> And then people call in to let us know bad things that are currently happening to them as a result. <laughs> Let's just cut that one off there. Let's just cut that one off there. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Read the last thing he pitched. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole list of things after summoning Satan. And then what's the last one? Bird sanctuary. <laughs> just the words bird sanctuary. Murph, do you want to read Drew's response to that? Bird Sanctuary, yes! <laughs> Shannon, Drew's next immediate email. Haircuts with Zach Galifianakis, part two, where we just pray he shows up. <laughs> Jay Miller reading J.D. Amato's. Or like checking in with Alyssa, where we keep announcing celebrities and no one walks out. <laughs> and we tell her that she's 18, the world won't be there to help her, and that <laughs> she'll be cold and alone. Ends with us giving her a knife and ordering her to kill an audience member in cold blood. <laughs> or, or, Horse Sanctuary. <laughs> the actual pitches that came in for this week's show. This was around the point when I thought, the show just needs to be us reading this email to <laughs> All right, Bethany, you are up next with Emma Noble's contribution to our writing. Oh, we have a chat. Sorry. Um, Let's ride bikes in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> or, see who we, or see who can make themselves throw up first. <laughs> or dress up someone like a rat and try to catch them. <laughs> dress up someone like a rat and try to catch them. All right, I want to point out, we already saw one where Drew tried to go to parties. Messenger bag. Let's please reveal Drew's next contribution and we'll see if there's not a theme of Drew just trying to get things that are his current whimsy. <laughs> Let's research it. Let's research what places deliver in the area. <laughs> then have the panelists pick which one they think will be the slowest. <laughs> and then we all order from Seamless and see who waits the longest. That's an actual pitch okay, Drew made. That, and here's what it comes down to, though. When Drew wrote that email, he was hungry. <laughs> That's what that email is about. All right, Murph, you're reading Emma Noble's next contribution. How about a what's in the box game? Grapes or eyes? <laughs> Does this tin have cookies or my dog's ashes in it? <laughs> and then, I don't know what this means, but Gethard Show dream sequence. All right. Wait, are those similar cookies and dog ashes? I do not know how. To Emma they are. Yeah. Emma's really good at going A to C. Uh, yeah, Emma requested, anytime Emma's dog dies, she requested they're just put into ash cookies. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never eat a cookie that Emma Noble no. offers you. <laughs> Shannon, I believe you'll She's be reading Drew's next one, which yep. is astounding to me that this came in. Mug shots. We encourage our audience to draw the faces of criminals on coffee mugs. <laughs> Then we take photos of them. <laughs> Makes no sense. Mug shots. We'll probably be doing that next week. And then Jay Miller with JD's immediate response. I will say in advance that I'm all for this episode. In, in response to mug shots, we have Mugsy shots. A whole episode is us taking pot shots at under heightened NBA phenom <laughs> Mugsy Bones. <laughs> That's good. Essentially the opposite of Grant Hillstock. That was the show we just did. Yeah, so I'm for that one. And then he's not finished there. I don't like the yeah, next one. You, uh, you want to just no, skip no, it? No, Muggsy, Muggsy shots. Let's end it on that. Okay, now. Oh, I want to read that next one. Tuxedo Penguin <laughs> Night. 
Only people allowed in the studio are those in a tuxedo, and everyone acts like a penguin for an hour. Okay. And now, wait, you know what? Let's pause there. Bethany, remember where we're going to pick up. Let's take a call, because this next one starts to get weird. Duke Punzetti starts, starts off the rails. Yeah, starts, starts to get, get really weird. weird. Andrew, you're online, Juan. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, what's up? What do you want to talk about? We're revealing the inner workings of our show. Uh, I hit 40-year-old Goosey with my car. Andrew, you, 40-year-old Goosey, please stand up. This man claims he hit you with a car. Is that why Goosey stopped dressing like a parrot? <laughs> when, did, why did you hit Goosey with a car? I have no memory of this. <laughs> Goosey does not remember you hitting him with a car. Seven year old coming up to Rhode Island. It's not my fault. Wait, what happened? I was coming up to Rhode Island, and I hit him with my car. You were coming to Rhode Island? Yeah, and I hit him with my car. I, is this like an alternate universe? Uh, well, you are a mess. I'm, I'm a time, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm a time traveler. Maybe it was another multiverse instance. I don't, I don't Andrew, know. Andrew, you may have just hit a man in a bird costume. <laughs> oh, I don't care, man. Do you want to explain any more, Andrew, or do you don't want to just let us wonder forever what you mean? I'll let you wonder. It's more fun that way. Cool. Well, Andrew, Andrew thank you for the fascinating call. Cheers. Goosey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, Bethany, do you want to read the next email that came in from Duke Ponzetti? Yeah. Uh, it says, lick the melon. <laughs> and then? And then it says, Chris must solve 100 magic eye puzzles in an hour, or man behind the plant gets to host the show next week. <laughs> and Chris has to end up behind the plant. And then? The anger management episode, an entire hour, hour dedicated to the movie <laughs> all right. Now, Drew read that email. All these ideas floating around. Here is Drew Johnson's response to those ideas. Explain to Duke Ponzetti that a magic eye isn't a puzzle. It's, <laughs> it's a picture. We do this the whole hour. Okay. J JD's next email by Murph. Do an episode called Pictures or Puzzles to Noah. <laughs> Duke Ponzetti's next email, Shannon O'Neill. They are also called Eye Puzzles, Dumb Butts. <laughs> All right. Stage and intervention. This is Emma Noble. Learn yoga from Mimi. Yes. <laughs> and a gathering of the Juggalos type event, but, <laughs> but with hula hoopers. A gathering of the Juggalos <laughs> with hula hoopers. Here was Duke Ponzetti's response from Bethany. That last one is a real thing that Mimi does. <laughs> Mimi does. Mimi does attend hooping events. Emma Noble's response to that revelation? Jesus. All right. And then Drew Johnson's contribution at the end of that. Let's do an episode called Jesus in response to Kanye's album. <laughs> Emma Noble's by Shannon O'Neill. Then just a genuine gathering of the jugglers. <laughs> Emails started to come in on top of each other. Okay. Noah Duke. Foreman. I mean, we should really have a dis dissection episode for science. <laughs> okay. Emma Noble's next contribution from Bethany, and then we'll take a call. The What Kind of Meat Are We Eating show. <laughs> I feel like this is genius. Some of them are. Some of them are okay. Oh, there's more. Sorry. Yeah, there's a, a, so much more. The Everyone Compliment Emma and Never Stop show, <laughs> in which no one can speak unless there are filibustering com compliments for me, and if they go off topic, they get shot with a Nerf sniper or a real sniper. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. The Wii Tennis Wimbledon, in which we play Wii Tennis and try to get sponsors. <laughs> and then last, this was my favorite from Emma's email here. Paint the Mona Lisa using only a jagged stick and yogurt. <laughs> Paint the Mona Lisa using only a jagged stick and yogurt. Shannon, you think so? Yes. All right, we got Duke Ponzi. Oh, no, we're going to take a call. Let's go to um, Steve and... Oh, we got to do the video right now? Yeah. Okay, I've been told very little about this, except that Connor Ratliff had a video, as you heard in our first email. Duke Ponzetti just looked very not pleased with how the show is going. Told me to roll the video, so I don't know much about it. The man behind the plant on his birthday, still stopping by the show, switching over. Let, ladies and gentlemen, a video from future Olympic gold medalist, Connor Ratliff. One, two, three, four, go! You're in the Olympics, you're in the Olympics, you're in the Olympics. <laughs> and you can 
achieve your dreams. <laughs> you can do anything you want when you're in the Olympics. You know, according to Malcolm Gladwell, all you need is to practice for 10,000 hours. That's all it takes. To become an Olympic, if you put in 10, there's no way. Hours, there's no way over the course of the next few years that I'm not going to put in ten thousand dollars becoming an Olympic hours. champion. Ten thousand what? Hours. What did I say? Dollars. Okay. <laughs> Let's say I do an hour a day for ten thousand days. How many years is that? Ten thousand divided by three sixty-five. An hour a day is twenty-seven years till you get to ten thousand hours. Okay. <laughs> One of the reasons that I've kept you two on is my pollsters. I know it's my understanding that a lot of uh, Olympic athletes don't have pollsters, uh, so no, that's a bit of a holdover from the presidential campaign. <laughs> I don't know if either of you have heard of a little movie called Moneyball, but this... Uh, I have. Yeah, great movie. Brad Pitt plays a, a, a baseball team owner who uh, has got a team full of people who aren't very good at baseball. They, they're not winners. They can't win baseball games. So he hires a nerdy numbers guy to figure out what's the number that will make my team a winning team. I'm projecting that we need to win at least 99 games in order to make it to the postseason. People are overlooked for a variety of biased reasons and, and perceived flaws. Age, appearance, personality. So if a baseball team that can't, is no good at baseball, that just can't do it, if there's a number that you can figure out, like this is your number, this is your number, and he gave everyone their numbers, and suddenly they're winning all the games, they're winning the World Series, because it's Moneyball, so you got Billy Bean, Billy Bean. So, it's, it's a little different. It's a on little base different. What I yeah, on base. On so base. what's your on base percentage, yeah. right? I money want ball. you guys to figure out what's my money ball number. What's yeah. the number? And it can be any number. I don't okay. care if it's a big number, Let's, smaller. What's the number right. that gets me into the Olympics? Maybe it's the certain number of hours that you that you work out every day would be the number. That's he's already said he can't do that. <laughs> what, so what are some numbers that are associated in your life? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some numbers? Obvious one would be thirty five when I ran for president. That number didn't work. That was the problem. Everything's everything's zeros and ones. Like everything you see, you can convert it into zeros and ones. But is that my money ball number? How does 115 feel? How's that number feel? Feels good. Out of okay. Feels so good. three. Three. Ten million. Uh, a four, 145. Faster. Negative, 27. Negative 10 in some contexts. Three. Again, I'm sorry, I'm stuck at three. Uh, 22. 501, 2, 103, 9, 6, 8, 1, 2, 0. 0.5, 20, 21. These are all good numbers. These are all great all numbers. numbers. <laughs> I just said four different numbers. Five different times. <laughs> you no, know, I said two, 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 three, three, four. What's this? I'm a number. You're a number. You're a number. You're a number. Every, everyone's a number. <laughs> Men's? Oh, uh, nine. Nine. Oh, you wrote it out. We're looking for that magic number. We're looking for what it is. What's my number? What's my money ball number? Gentlemen, future Olympic gold medal winner Connor Ratliff is here. Hello. Connor, what do you need to tell us after that fantastic and eye-opening video? Well, I'm here to announce a contest that's going to be going on, and it will end next Wednesday. And uh, I want people to tweet at me for the next week to try and guess what my Moneyball number is. <laughs> all right? And whoever guesses it, the first four people are going to win something. All right? And the first prize winner, the first person to tweet at Ratliff 2016 Gold, <laughs> and guess my Moneyball number correctly, will win my stadium blanket. Oh, wow. wow. Now, I'm not kidding. That's, that's a $65 value. <laughs> all right? So let's take wow. this seriously, all right? Yes. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Uh, and please promise not to do anything illegal or offensive with the blanket when you get it. All right? It's very important. What can you do illegal with a blanket? <laughs> you would be surprised. <laughs> All right, so you got the information. Win Connor's blanket, ladies and gentlemen. Ratliff2016 Gold on Twitter. It starts now.
Woo! Yeah, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, Connor Rattler. Go, go! the LLC, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so we're reading you all the emails. Went into the show. Transparent. Shannon, you were just looking at Twitter. Are people liking this episode or no? Alyssa wants to know what the fuck you read on air. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Late in the day yesterday, we got an email from Rich. Rich is our dude here at m &N. He helps us set everything up. He's the man. And he's our guy. And he let us know. He sent an email. The open studio is functional, but we have had a massive power problem that killed most of the dimmers in the studio. Most of the lights are down. Not sure how long a fix will take. We'll know more tomorrow. We may have a badly compromised lighting situation Wednesday. I will let you know more when I know. All right, with that being said, we, yeah, we are compromised, as you can see. Who's next? Messenger bag, are you up? Yep. Let's go messenger bag. Read Emma's response to that email. Awesome. <laughs> The Nude Below the Waist Show. <laughs> no pause at all. No pause. We only shoot the top halves of people, and nobody wears pants, and all anyone talks about is each other's genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> we assign everyone a different task, operate the studio as a sweatshop, and the end goal is to make a single pair of Nikes. <laughs> Aboriginal dream time. We have no lights. Everyone wears the glow-in-the-dark body paint like it's a Kesha music video. <laughs> and silently enact our prediction of the end of times. <laughs> Call and topics include Kesha and the apocalypse. Okay. <laughs> Drew Johnson's contribution, post-light fiasco. What if, we, what if we all pretend that Rich said we needed to bring flashlights? <laughs> <laughs> so we just... So we just come to the studio with a bunch of masturbation toys. Okay. Emma jumps back in. Shannon O'Neill. Flashlights versus flashlights. <laughs> one, one half of the panel tries to light the studio and conduct a show, but the other half masturbates in the dark. Yeah. Okay. I would be sick that day. Dude, I like that one. Yeah. That would be sick that day. Yeah. <laughs> Duke Ponzetti's next contribution via Jay Miller. Um, I like how the studio is still considered open and functional after a massive power problem <laughs> killed most of the that dimmers. That is the beauty of public access, <laughs> baby. We don't need lights. We don't need lights. All right, JD's enthusiastic and very unironic. I can vouch for JD's response on this. The wheels on the camera still mostly work, so game's still on. <laughs> game on, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Duke Ponzetti, at this point, this was, as I said, late in the day Tuesday. We're taking you through the whole week, transparency with how our show comes together. Duke Ponzetti did start to get very iffy about the fact that I would not tell him my idea. Messenger bag, what did he have to say? What the fuck is happening this week? And that's when I said, we just need to keep brainstorming. Okay, and then Murph, Duke Ponzetti said... Why do you say we? You went silent. <laughs> <laughs> Are we walking into a trap? <laughs> and then I wrote back, stop asking questions. <laughs> and then J.D. Amato wrote via Shannon O'Neill. At least we are absolved from blame on this one. <laughs> Let's beat racism by finding one member of every race that is exactly the same and forcing them to slow dance for it the full hour. Okay. Jay Miller, Drew Johnston with yet another stunning contribution. We play 20 questions, but the answer is always a marsupial. Always. Okay. Bethany Hall will show you that JD also started to get mad at me for not saying what was going on. If we pulled this on you, you did not be down with it. Maybe we won't come this week. Okay, now this is my favorite email in the whole week of planning. You have all heard Drew Johnston's ideas. Random messenger bag, will you please read his next email? I just want to point out that a lot of my pitches seem like joke pitches now. They are not. Not one joke pitch. Okay, JD responding to Drew's previous I email. Go, I want to go back and read his other one. He was now. serious about all of them. Okay, JD responding to the marsupial one. That would eventually just that would eventually just be us listing facts about marsupials. <laughs> okay. Now JD started doing something very interesting in his frustration here. Shannon O'Neill. Let's see if anybody picks up on this. It took me a minute to figure it out. Okay, here's a pitch. Tonight's episode begins with live music played by the host on acoustic guitar 
with his accompanying vocals. A brief message from the host tying music into education follows. The Spanish lesson that comes next is a review of concepts from previous show's lessons, <laughs> e.g. upside down question marks, donde, a star, articles, gender agreement, and colors. In the subsequent segment, the host discusses current events. A rise in New York's statewide standardized test scores is introduced first. Shannon, do you know what he's doing there? He's saying, have Ger Stevens, the host. <laughs> he is pitching <laughs> Ger Stevens' show. Episode ideas that he is lifting from previous episodes of Education Matters with Ger Stevens. <laughs> he's another producer on MNN, and I was told not to talk any smack about Ger Stevens. We're not talking any smack about Ger. His name has not come up on this show for like a year and a half, but I will say this. In mid-July, Ger Stevens... We are missing a show in July because Gurr decided to book the studio on Wednesday at 11 to host his show. And I'm assuming Gurr just didn't realize that that's our regular time slot. And I will just say, if Gurr is hosting a call-in show that night, I think that's great. We'll take a week off. And if you're someone who likes call-in shows, <laughs> if you like our call-in show, <laughs> that night you can just call his show instead <laughs> and just talk about education. <laughs> Do I get like an aggregate show? Am I getting cheesy? Yeah, that won't count against your 15. And message bag, I gotta say, I like the fight, man. All right. All right I cool. like the fight. That won't count towards your 15. So you're into this, messenger bag. You're enjoying this. Yeah, this is the most fucking fun I have all week. All right. Oh, yeah, messenger bag. All right, let's take a call, and then we're gonna keep going with more. Let's go to Steven Pittsburgh. How are you? Hey, guys. How's it going? It's pretty good. You're hard to hear. We're all gonna focus. What do you want to know about the inner machinery of the Chris Gethard show? Um, I would just want to know more of the technical aspects, not so much the writing and planning. Like, I want to know the infighting between techies and writers. Oh, well, that's interesting you say that, because maybe I'll skip and I'll read an email from Old Jersey Dave. Oh, old yeah. Jersey Dave. Let me see. <laughs> old Jersey Dave. No, no, no. Jersey, oh, okay. Jersey Dave is sort of the, the best. Jersey Dave is the best. Well, he yeah. kills it. He crushes it all the time. But here's something. One of the inner workings as far as the tech goes, a lot of people contact us, how can I get involved? Here's how Jersey Dave became involved in our show. I don't know if anybody knows this. This is the email Jersey Dave sent. And I'm going to leak this email, Jersey Dave. And I know you don't like that. Here's the, here's the original email Jersey Dave sent. And we can all vouch. Jersey Dave, nicest guy ever, nice right? Guy. Oh, yeah, nicest top. guy ever. Here's the fucking email this dude sent to us. <laughs> My name is Dave Sereko. I literally don't know how to pronounce your last name. Did yeah, I say you it right? Didn't get it. No, you, you did, not, did not get it right. Did not get it right. <laughs> I only call you Jersey Dave. And I'm a videographer. I shoot, direct, and edit videos as much as possible, and I'd love to volunteer my time and know out of the Gethard Show. I've only recently moved to New York, so I'm new to m and but holy hell, I'm hooked. Your show is a train wreck. <laughs> Stand by that. Of absurdity, <laughs> half-baked <laughs> ideas, and uncouth strangers You're consistently. You're not being transparent there. You didn't say something. Oh, your show is a beautiful train wreck. Yes. I missed a word. Of absurdity, <laughs> half-baked <laughs> ideas, and uncouth strangers that consistently exactly. forces me to ask, how can I help make this? And then he goes, I have a job as a video. He tells him what his job was. And then he says, I have a car, talent, my own equipment, and I want to work hard for this show for free. So to conclude, here's why you'll be making a mistake if you don't email me back. <laughs> He lists some stuff that he owns. It all fits into a backpack. I can shoot wherever. My feet, public transportation, or my Jeep Wrangler can take me. Yeah! And, I, and I can make it look better, the same, or worse than the videos that you have on your show now. Your call. Oh. I can edit and I can edit good. He lists all the different editing things he does. Give me footage, I'll edit. I hate editing, but I want to help. I can do it on planes when not in town. He lists some of his credentials, where he's worked, this and that. I would love to get this email from anybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was furious when I got this email. I believe in this show. Yeah, dude, because he, he goes, he, I'll skip right to the end. Here's the part that had me furious. You can make the argument that some of the show's mistakes are part of the public access aesthetic. <laughs> the confusion over what mics are hot slash what mics are supposed to be hot. Crappy video quality, sound during the beginning of video segments being cut out, etc. Those are things I can help fix if you want them fixed. Again, it's your call. Hell yeah! But the Ustream being down, you clearly want fixed, right? And then at this point, I feel like I've over-argued my point, so I'll step back. But to recap, your show is boss. I can make it bosser. <laughs> Make 
make it bosser. Let me make it bosser. Make that shit bosser. <laughs> Jerry, you didn't, you didn't step up. I was furious. I thought that was an email from a dick. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm nice. <laughs> Very nice. Jersey Dave came in and killed it. Sounds yeah. Like a good new t-shirt idea. Just Jersey Dave with the slogan, let me make it boss. Oh! 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 That's awesome. If you want a t-shirt with this man's face on it and the phrase, let me make it bosser, leave a message on the TCGS message board. We'll get it going. Right now, I think we're going to go back to our musical guests who brought the house down before. And then we're going to rifle through a few more emails, bring it to you people, let you know how it works. But before that, Let's go ahead and let them show us how it works. Ladies and gentlemen, Les Vinyl! Coast. Drinking water bottles with all my friends. Moved to the West Coast. Drinking from those metal container things. I can see it both ways, even though it's shout and doubt. I can live in one place. I can do it out. New York City status matters whether or not you're vain. California Kingdom is a world. the right coast seeing old friends that now do coke to the left to the left coast legalized headshot toad and folk not a pretty picture either way it's so exposed it's a city fixture i've been told new york city limits have atlantic city rays las vegas interests got some And there's a show I'm supposed to plug, right? Yeah, we have a show on Friday night at the Full Cup in Staten Island. It's a, it's a pretty awesome bar. Friday night. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're, we're um, our album. Please buy it either for free, which doesn't make sense. You can't buy something for free. But uh, or you could just donate whatever you want to. Thanks, thanks, donate Chris. Donate what you want. Thank you. Less vinyl. All right. Let's uh, 
let's skip to the night that Jew Johnson said another one about marsupials. Let's go ahead. Wait. Who's up? Bethany? <laughs> Can I just say the first line of Drew's next one? Yeah. Which is, I think we need to make it clear, the answer is always a marsupial. <laughs> but the game is who can ask the most questions. Yes. <laughs> JD comes in, our next two emails. All right. Both, wait until we can skip these and just mention, JD pitched two more episode ideas from previous episodes of Education Matters. <laughs> two more. And then let's go, let's go to Noah Foreman's next one, Bethany. Okay. Uh, we have a bunch of dead frogs. <laughs> We shove a penny down one of the frog's mouths. <laughs> then we dis dissect each under uh, strobe lights until we find the penny. <laughs> Can we have dead animals? Okay, J.D. Amato, he's the guy who knows all the like rules. Messenger bag, his response. Yes, we can. <laughs> Good thought, Noah. Weird loophole. Can't have live animals, can have dead animals. All right. Duke Ponzetti's next contribution from Murph. I mean, we really should have a dissection episode for science. <laughs> and then he immediately sent another one. Shannon O'Neill, Duke Ponzetti's next email. Let's ask the viewers to research as much as they can about random messenger bag. <laughs> Not just where he went to high school or grew up, but like addresses, social security number, <laughs> and dental records. <laughs> Okay, oh Jay Miller with J.D. What's that? Dental rep. You motherfucker. <laughs> that way, if you die, we'll know it's you. <laughs> Jay Miller with J.D. Amato's response. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Reverse. How random is random G? Reversing one of our least popular episodes. <laughs> we need to do that. <laughs> That would be great. Okay, Bethany, <laughs> Drew's response to that, to someone saying that's a great idea that someone else had. Here is Drew's actual response. Let's see who can chew the most gum. <laughs> <laughs> and then messenger bag, it's appropriate. You read the final uh, planning email from today. It was also from Drew Johnston. Also, if we get into how much we can figure out about random messenger bag, I think we need to have a messenger bag as a reward to whoever wins. <laughs> and it can be full of random messenger bags, hair and nail clippings. <laughs> full of his hair and nail clippings. And ladies and gentlemen, those are our writers. That's what they bring to the table. That's it. Those are all the ideas that got passed around. We didn't even have time to get into the hand truck fiasco. We lost a hand truck. You asked me my last pitch. Let's drink a fire extinguisher. <laughs> hand ran in. That one did come in at like 9.30. Drew Johnston pitched the idea that we drink a fire extinguisher. Drew, why don't you come up here? Yeah. Drew, how does it feel hearing that list read out loud back to you? How do you feel about your comedic ideas? I stand by all of them. <laughs> yeah. okay. Every single one of them. Which is the one you would most like to do next week, yours or anyone else's? Mug shots. Yeah. 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 I would love to draw, like... Draw, <laughs> draw criminals like, on yeah, mugs. Like, horrible, like Ted Bundy on a mug, <laughs> and then take a photo of it, and then turn the mug to on its side <laughs> and take a photo of that. Take a mug shot. Yeah. Take a mug shot on a hand-drawn mug shot on a mug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want a whole episode to be taking mug shots of hand-drawn yeah. mug shots uh -huh. on mugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell right. you, this is a meme. This would blow up. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Usually, this panel, they just take what's spoon for them. I'm going to let everybody vote. LLC, next week, mug shots, nay or yay? Nay. Nay. Oh. One vote against. Murph. Nay. Nay! Nay. Yeah. Shannon O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah! Two to one against mugshots. Jay Miller, you are a guest, but you do get a vote. <laughs> Can I change it to Mugsy shots? Because I no, do that you one. said mugshots. I did say mugshots. Uh, you know what? I think I'm down with mugshots. Okay. Yeah. Tied at two. Bethany Hall next week. Do you want to do mugshots or no? If I say no, do we get to pick a different one? No, we don't have time for that. Yeah, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Messenger bag, which one would you vote for from the whole list? From the whole list. Because lukewarm enthusiasm for mugshots. Yeah. Maybe we just let messenger bag pick. Yeah. 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 Everybody's down with that? Yeah. Drew, you down with that? Yeah. Duke Ponzetti, you down with that? I honestly could care less. <laughs> Duke Ponzetti, how mad are you that I read all your ideas? Uh, I'm honestly just mad that you said, I said dumb butt. 
<laughs> you type, you wrote dumb butt. Yeah. So why are you mad at me for reading what you actually wrote, which was dumb butt? I would have said something far more offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you down with that messenger bag pick? Yeah, whatever. Whatever. None of the writers give a fuck. JD Amato, you okay with it? Let the messenger bag choose. Let the messenger bag choose. Random messenger bag, you have been on this show. This is your third week. Third week. You are now picking the show topic from that list. Um, I really like a uh, nude from the waist down. We can't do it. We can't do it. No, 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 no. We can't be, we can't be naked in the studio. Underwear? Underwear? Underwear. I'm out of town. Shannon's out of town next week. I'll do that. Hey, wants to do it, do it. Bethany's got a cold. Shannon's out of town. It's just going to be me, you, and Murph in our underwear for an hour next week. Me, Messenger Bag, and Murph in our underwear. Tune in next week. Cannot wait to have you. Sincere thanks to all of our writers for writing a list so funny that I had to figure out a show that we could just read it. Thanks to everybody for bringing flashlights and supporting our show. Thanks to all you guys. Thanks to Les Vinyl. Go find them online. Download all their shit. Thank you, Jay Miller. And stay tuned for the evening. Always. Just leave it like you Leave your computer on. That's our sister show, and it'll definitely be funnier than ours.